Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're going to be looking at the Bytes package. And basically, um, you may think it's weird that they have a package called Bytes, but if you th remember, we just finished talking about the strings package and it gives us all these nice methods that we can use to manipulate in strings, whether it's trimming it, we didn't look at everything, but hopefully you can gloss over the package and the functions, but trimming it, splitting it, getting fields from it and so on, cutting, concatenating things, uh, you know, the whole nine replacing things within a string. It's not surprising then that it would have a package that operates on bytes because if you remember, um, all we always dealing with in a computer is really just bytes. And then whether we have a string or a character or a number of whatever format, string, boolean, all those things are just representation of a collection of bytes. We talked about this way back in like chapter two. And in Go, especially, we can move easily between having a slice of bytes and a string and a string and getting a slice of bytes. So in the bytes package, we see some of the same functions um, that we have in the strings package, you know, the split, the fields, replace, conk, map, um, to upper and to lower, because um, you can have some of those bytes in a, um, that are representative of, you know, printable characters. So you might want to do to lower and lower. There, there's title also in there. The one we're going to be kind of looking at is the buffer. And there's a buffer type that um, basically is a struct that is provided in the bytes package. And it's very, very much like the memstore type that we did in chapter 10, if I think it was chapter 10. We have this thing called memstore and it acted like a file where you can write bytes to it and you know, write stuff to it and read stuff from it, which was just bytes because it implemented the IO reader, or IO writer um, interface. But here you have the same thing. And of course there's um, the write string method that makes things easier and a few others. So we're gonna kind of look at it and you'll see why something like having a something like a bytes buffer um, makes sense for you to be able to mani manipulate a large amount of data, um, especially if you want to be in memory and then able to write it out to a file or read stuff into a file into a buffer. And that's sort of what we're gonna do. We're gonna read stuff in from a file into a buffer and we're gonna see it's easier once we have it in a buffer to be able to split on things that we want and you know have some access to it. We're not gonna go that far, but we are gonna do Part of it so anyway enough talking let's get into it and let's take a look at creating our project directory here and sort of getting started um, it's the usual thing so we're gonna speed up a little bit past that um, then we're going to go over and look at the package documentation and Again, like I said, there are none of these um, function here. And as you can see, if you read the documentation, you'll see that though it's just like we said, it's like the string string package and with all these different functions. And we look at the split function here. Again, now you're gonna be able to split on one or more bytes, which is pretty handy. Here, you can split on a slice of bytes. So really, it's much, much, much more flexible, allowing you to um, have something and be able to split, let's say, on a person name if you wanted to divide things that way or whatever, some other string. But basically, you turn that string into a byte and you could use that, right? So it's not just one character, really, a rune you could split on, but set a series slice of bytes or a set of bytes. Okay. And of course, those slice of bytes could represent multiple characters. Um, so the other thing we're going to be looking at, like I said, is um, this buffer type. And um, as you can see, a buffer is just a variable size buffer of bytes. And um, you can read and write to it because it provides those read and write methods from the IO package. And of course, um, the zero value of a buffer, it says, is ready to use. You don't have to do anything. To show you an example here where you could create a buffer and then you could write into it using the write method, you know, writing some bytes. And of course, you can use the FMT package because we know that oh, the FMT that F print, for example, write to some writer. And since a buffer could be used like a writer, you could just write into it also. Um, and then um, they just print it out by using um, the buffer that write to method, and which would write to some um, IO writer. And in this case, they use standard out. All right, so now we can sort of go and start writing some code. So let's create a buffer here and for us, um, we're gonna write in some string into this buffer. Um, you know, two two lines of text essentially. And one we're gonna write in using the write method and convert the string to a byte. 
um, so slice of bytes. The other one we're going to use FMT F printf and format a string and stick it in the buffer. And it's not that important the, me writing it, and it's, but the end result. And there you see, um, um, I'm finished here. I still have some error there. The error basically is on two lines. So on line nine, I have PRR. So I guess I got one of those R. But the really important one is on 13. And that's why I want to really stop here and focus on this. Um, if you look, we have this bytes buffer and we can use B that right and it works fine because even though if you look at the implementation documentation, you'd see it all, it's a pointer to a buffer is the receiver for that write method. But the reason this works when we cover up um, talking about um, methods, if you remember, um, B that write is short and for enclosing B and I'm taking the address of it and then calling the right method on it. So we can do that. The reason why 13 doesn't work is because now you're passing to a function a copy of that buffer. And then inside that function, it wants to take a pointer. So it's not going to happen, right? Uh, we played with this, we tried it, and we, when we look, talk about method, we talk about why this would not work. So we can fix this easily by just passing a pointer to our buffer. And now, that's that's fine, right? So on 12, you see me um, write ampersand B, but B that write was a shorthand for that anyway. So basically, go line is going to take a pointer if it can, but it doesn't know what you want to do, so it doesn't do that in line 13. So you have to be explicit. And of course, we can say for our buffer or by buffer, we want to turn that into string representation. So it, it also implement the stringer interface from FMT package. If you remember, we did this way back, we implement the stringer interface by adding a string method. Okay, so now we can um, print out our um, our buffer, and if we run it and print it, is exactly what we um, what we we should we expect, right? Um, the other thing we can do is say, well, now that we have a buffer, remember you can read from it. So I can create a string and then do f scan line on it, or scan or f scan f if you like. Please play with the scan methods because um, from this scan function from the FMT package, because you know they're kind of weird. Um, but if you remember they always break on an empty space or on a new line. So um, you want to play with that if you don't quite understand it. So now when I try to scan um, this buffer, notice how oh, it stopped after hello comma because after that is a white space. And even though I have scan line, it's still going to stop there. Even if I change this to scan, it still will stop there. So definitely check that out and make sure you understand it. All right. So. The next thing I actually want to do is say, well, let's open up our main program. Just read that like if it's our data file. Essentially, I'm going to have this program print out the um, our main program. But what I want to do is print out line numbers attached to our main program. Well, sort of. I'm going to prepend or append, sorry, our main program to the buffer we already have with Hello World and Holy Batman. And so essentially, um, the output is going to be those two lines that I already have in my buffer plus when I read in the um, thing. Now, when I try to print that, uh, you can see our two lines are there, plus the program, and then at the end is some other information about a buffer. So I don't want that. So um, I'm going to convert our buffer to string, and now I get exact just what I, I want. All this text that I have written and I read from our file, split it on a new line. So I take a new line, cast it to byte slice and call the split method on the buffer. The important thing to note on line 25 is that B is just this buffer with capital you know, B, and what I need is a slice of bytes. So on a buffer, I can call the bytes method, and that takes my buffer and give me byte slice representation. So to get at that byte slice, I have to call the bytes method. Just to get, just as I would want a string representation, I have to call the string method. Does that make sense? All right, so look at line 25. I'm going to call bytes that split. So I'm calling the split function provided by the byte package, passing it a slice of bytes, but I get those slice of bytes from my buffer that I already read from a file and all this other stuff, and which we, we can see from line 24. I just call buffer that read from and give it a IO that reader, and it knows how to just go to the IO reader, read everything, and stick it into that buffer, right? The underlying byte slice there for that buffer. And then I want to say split it on these set of byte slices. In this case, it just happened to be pretty much one, which is a new line. And then now I could iterate. So lines represents a slice of slice of bytes, right? So 
Um, no, when I iterate over that with L and N, N is the index, but L represents a slice of bytes because lines is a slice of slice of bytes, right? And so when I iterate over that, what I'm iterating over, each time I go a loop, I get a slice of bytes and now I can turn that into string and now I can put um, the line number. Of course, my line number is sort of wrong, so I have to go back and add one to it to because it started off with zero. I was indexing into a um, slice or array is gonna start with zero. So I just add one and now everything is fine. Again, a little bit of a contrived example, but um, what I want to show is now after we've read in from the file, I could still append to that buffer. So buffer load is dual use where you can write into it and read from it. And so we did that, right? Remember we wrote into it, then read back with our FMT F scan line. Then we were able to write more stuff into it from a file. And then we were able to append to it that again by writing this as the end. So anyway, I just want to show you the flexibility of a buffer. It's going to come in handy. All right, take care. Um, I hope this was um, helpful to you. Um, please remember to subscribe, thumbs up the video. See you in the next video. All right, take care. Have a great day. Bye.